Welcome to ASR Bias Institute. In this video, we are covering an important topic in general studies which is called ecology and environment. And in this, we are going to cover our first heading which is called ecosystem. So, in this subject, ecology and environment, the most important and first topic which we start with is ecosystem. So, first of all, an introduction, we need to understand what we are going to study in this subject. So, what do you mean by ecology? What do you mean by environment? And then we come to what is an ecosystem. So, what do you mean by the term ecology? Ecology basically as we understand subjects like biology, sociology. So, logy means the study. So, ecology is a scientific study of relationships between living organisms with others and with the environment. So, how everything is interrelated. So, this study is called ecology. So, we cover study about even energy flow, mineral cycling, you know the nutrient cycles is covered under the subject ecology. Then we come to the term environment. We have been studying about environment since we were young. CBS environmental studies has been an important topic in schooling years too. So environment, what do you mean by the environment? Is the sum total of everything. The living, non-living components which are there. The surrounding of an organism. Everything is called his environment. So in the environment, we have both abiotic factors and biotic factors. Which in simple terms as we study in school too is non-living things and living things. Bio means related to living beings. So, biotic is living things. Abiotic is non-living things. So, what are these components of environment? You can see they are listed here. So, abiotic components would include something like the energy which is required for every living organism to survive. Radiation coming from the sun, etc. Temperature, heat flow, understanding about water, gases, fire, the gravitational field, the concept of gravity, the gravitational force. Topography means the landscape as such, the soil which is there, the geological substrate, all this is part of abiotic factors. In simple terms, what we study in lower classes is land, water and air. So, it has been elaborated here. And then biotic factors are living beings. So, living beings from small minute organisms like parasites, symbionts, decomposers to even plants, green plants, non-green plants as well as animals and of course humans. So, those are the biotic components of environment. So, every organism here you can see is dependent on one another, is dependent on abiotic factors too for their survival. So, it's a complex system which is there which is called the environment both including living and non-living things. And the most important thing, the important statement here is that environment is not static. This is very important to understand that the environment is not static. Right? Both biotic and abiotic factors are in a flux and keep changing continuously. Right? So, here you can see the segregation done once, once again in clear terms that biotic means living things, abiotic means non-living things and here you can see the living and non-living things detailed out like living things from bacteria, animals, protists, plants, fungi, to non-living things like air, water, Soil, salinity, temperature, minerals, humidity, pH, all these are non-living aspects. Now we come to our next topic, which is ecological organization. So understanding ecological organization, you should know that there are six levels of ecological organization. Starting from an individual organism to finally coming to the last part which is our biosphere. So, here is the arrangement. You can see the first level, the lowest level is individual. Means an individual organism. Population is a group of organisms. Community is a group of different forms of organisms. You know? So, there are plant species like in a grassland community, there will be grass, then there will be trees, there will be some animals living in that. So, that is the entire community. Ecosystem is the entire structural and functional unit of biosphere. So, it comprises of living things as well as non-living things as we just discussed, ecosystem has both biotic and abiotic factors. Then we come to biome. So biome, the term biome, what does it mean is important. Also an important part about biomes is that aquatic systems are not called biomes and no two biomes are alike. So biomes means the terrestrial part of the biosphere that is divisible into enormous regions called biomes. So they have specific climate, vegetation, animal life. So that is called biome. So here you can see it will be further clarified when we look at this figure. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is the biome distribution based on temperature and precipitation. So, different
different biomes are based on here you can see the x axis represent precipitation means rainfall so very dry regions to wet regions so very dry regions like deserts to tropical rainforest this all these regions so here you have the y axis to showing temperature very warm to very cold very cold comes the polar region so desert region is low temperatures are high and rainfall is low so this is the desert region then you have less rainfall and little cooler is mediterranean then you have the mountains the taiga tundra and polar regions in the polar region you know, towards the poles where we move towards the poles here in between where you have moderate rainfall is temperate grasslands and hot grasslands so warm and temperatures are warm this is the hot grassland which is called savanna and temperate grasslands are called prairie then very wet regions with warm climate are tropical rainforests in the equatorial regions where the temperatures are high and rainfall is also high means temperatures are high means it's warm temperatures are warm and rainfall is high here you have the temperate forests where the temperatures become cooler and rainfall is still high so it becomes clear that no two biomes are alike each has its different characteristics and name and aquatic systems are not called biomes so you should be clear with these two systems these two statements next we come to the last part which is the biosphere so it is the part of the earth where life exists so it is the interacting zone comprising of all atmosphere hydrosphere and lithosphere because like birds live in atmosphere there are fishes and other aquatic animals in water and animals live, and humans also living on land so biosphere comprises the in this means here you can see this makes clearly signifies how all aquatic organisms aerial birds as well as terrestrial animals all are part of the biosphere so this is the biosphere there are other terminologies too as you can see here so there is a term called geosphere so means the, the three part we saw atmosphere lithosphere hydrosphere there is a fourth one called cryosphere cryosphere represents polar regions or ice capped regions and so the regions where there is ice covering is called cryosphere so cryo basically means very low temperature where water becomes ice so that is the cryosphere and here there is this image which clearly shows the entire six layers you can see the first layer starting from individual organism to a population of that same species of organism then a community of organisms comprising of different populations of different types of animals plants etc and then you have the ecosystem comprising of biotic as, as well as abiotic factors and then you have the biome and the entire all the biome together form the biosphere so this is about the levels of ecological organization next we come to our topic ecosystem where we understand the topic further in detail so what is the ecosystem here is the definition it's the structural and functional unit of biosphere consisting of living organisms as well as the physical environment so we already saw these abiotic and biotic components so now we look at the types of ecosystems so what are the types of ecosystems you can see here aquatic ecosystem terrestrial ecosystem so there is no aquatic biome but ecosystem can be aquatic aquatic also can be fresh water or marine and terrestrial ecosystems include you can see forest ecosystem grassland ecosystem mountain ecosystem desert ecosystem as well as the tundra region in the polar north polar region then we come to the terminology this is a very important term here you can see this is called ecotone so what is ecotone so ecotone means a zone of junction or junction between two or more diverse ecosystems so like here you have a land ecosystem and here you have an aquatic ecosystem and this is the transitional ecosystem in between the two like mangrove forest grow here so this is an ecotone between marine and terrestrial ecosystem so that is called an ecotone here this is from the transitional ecosystem here you can see this is ecotone marshland then there is another terminology called ecological niche what is ecological niche it is a description of all biological physical and chemical factors that a species needs to survive stay healthy and reproduce so ecological niche you can see here there are different types of niche like habitat niche food niche reproductive niche and physical and chemical niche so each species occupies a niche in the community means the role the species plays 
it gives you the type of food it eats, where it lives, where it reproduces, its relationship with other species and so on. So here you can see this is an example given. These are different species of wobbler birds. This is bay breasted wobbler, this is cape May wobbler and this is yellow rum wobbler. And each of these species occupy the different region in the ecosystem. Here you can see this species feeds in the lower part of the tree at the base and middle branches. Then this species here, bay breasted wobbler, feeds in the middle part of the tree. And this one feeds at the tip of the branches near the top of the branch. So each species occupies a particular position in the community. So that is the role it plays. So depending on that, then it depends on the type of food it eats, you know, where it lives where it lives, where it reproduces, and so on. So that is called ecological niche. Then next, we look at functions of ecosystem. So what are the functions of ecosystem? So here you can see there are three main functions which an ecosystem fulfills. And first one is energy flow. So energy flow takes place through the ecosystem. Nutrient cycling. Nutrient cycling means we have already studied at school level so about various cycles like carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, oxygen cycle. So, nutrients are cycled in the environment. So, that is the function of the ecosystem. The ecosystem is the place where nutrient cycling is taking place. And third one is ecological successor. So, we will understand each of these three terms now. First one is energy flow. First of all, in energy flow, you should understand that flow of energy from producer to top consumers is called energy flow. And this is unidirectional in one direction from first producer till top consumer. So this is basically energy flow through trophic levels from one trophic level to another. So lower trophic levels like producers to higher trophic levels like herbivores and carnivores and so on. These are the apex consumers. So this important point here is that energy flow is unidirectional. It never flows in the reverse direction. This is a very important point here. So this is all that you have to remember here. Otherwise, energy flow, as we understand, is clearly evident that, uh, you know, lower level organisms have energy stored in them, which is consumed by consumers. And it, each, it, it goes ahead at each trophic level. So, there is loss of some energy in the form of unusable heat also at each trophic level. Hence, energy level decreases from first trophic level upwards. So, these are the trophic levels shown here too. From primary producers, that is plants, till you can go up to from primary consumers to secondary consumers and then to tertiary consumers. So, this is the first trophic level, then the second trophic level, third trophic level and the fourth. So, these are called autotrophs to plants. Primary producers are autotrophs. Those who eat plants, those animals are called herbivores. Then carnivores, primary carnivores are those who eat the herbivores and secondary carnivores who eat primary carnivores. So, this is the, di the diagram of the trophic levels. Energy flow is unidirectional from primary producers till up in the food chain. So, next term which we will see is also about the food chain. So, a trophic level interaction involves three concepts. One is food chain, second is food web and third is ecological pyramid. So, each one of them will be understood. First of all, we will understand what is a food chain. So, the sequence of organisms that feed on one another form a food chain. So, from producers till the top carnivores. So, we already saw that was a food chain shown above. Now, we will see types of food chains. So, first one is grazing food chain. Grazing food chain means it begins with green plants. Grazing in the, is done on green plants. Right? Primary consumers, the herbivores, eat the green plants. So, that is called a grazing food chain which starts off in this manner. From green plants to herbivores, primary consumers. So, herbivores are primary consumers. You should remember this. And then come the carnivores. So, here you can see these are the producers, the plant. Then the caterpillar eats the leaves, the plant. And then the frog eats the caterpillar. The snake eats the frog and then finally the owl eats up the snake. So, this is a food chain shown. This is called grazing food chain. Right? There is another example like here you can see the grass eaten by zebra and zebra eaten up by the lion. There can be an aquatic food chain too like algae. Algae uh, you know, is eaten up by zooplankton, the plant, uh, plants, types of plants in water body. And then the fish eat the zooplankton and the fish is eaten up by an eagle. The aquatic food chain. Right? So, each one, this is the prime producer. Algae is blue green algae, they produce their own food. So, they are also producers. Grass, algae are producers. These are the primary consumers, secondary consumers, and then you may have a tertiary consumer too. Then we come to another type of food chain. So, there are two main types of food chains one is grazing food chain, and another one is detritus food chain. So, detritus food chain basically starts from dead organic matter. 
So dead organic matter of decaying animals and plant bodies is consumed by microorganisms. Right? So this is how the food chain begins. The detritus. So this worm eats the dead plant. And this worm then is eaten up by the turtle. The turtle eaten up by the eagle. So this is called a detritus food chain. Which does not start from live plant. But dead plants. Dead organic matter. Decaying matter. So such a food chain is called detritus. So the like here the, it is the earthworm earthworm or any worm which is eating this dead plant such organisms are called detritus feeding organism or detrivores right? they are also called decomposers so these are three terms here given detritus feeding organism detrivores or decomposers which in this case here is the worm then you have another example given here you can see litter like dead matter dead matter eaten up by earthworms, earthworms eaten up by chicken and chicken by hog. So this is another example of detritus food chain. So we saw the first term food chain, different types of food chain, two main types, grazing and detritus food chain. Then we come to the second term food web. So what is a food web? It's a complex system of all different food chains because a food chain in real life does not exist in a linear manner. So there are all these food chains get intermingled. So the all possible transfer of energy and nutrients among the organisms in an ecosystem can be shown through a food web, not a food chain. So it does not trace only one pathway of the food, but the entire intermingling or interactions are shown here. Because a hawk, it may eat a grasshopper, it may eat a lizard too. You know, at some point it may eat a rabbit. So this is a complexity shown here. All food chains intermingled, it is called a food web. Like a snake may eat the mouse. Or the mouse may be eaten directly by the hawk. And the snake may also be eaten by the hawk. So all these interactions being shown is called a food web. So this is a food web in grassland ecosystem. Then the third term which was there is ecological pyramid. So there are different types of ecological pyramids. You can have a pyramid of numbers. Or you can have a pyramid of energy. Or you can also have a pyramid of biomass. So there are three, these three types of pyramids we need each one of them and what is the difference between each. So here you see starting with pyramid of numbers. So what is this pyramid of numbers? It shows the relationship between number of primary producers and consumers at different levels. So more organisms will be there at the producer level. So it's a pyramid. It's triangular because producers are the main organisms. Producers are being fed on by herbivores. Carnivores depend on herbivores. So there will be more of herbivores then carnivores, then secondary carnivores and the top carnivores. And here you have another food chain being shown. This is in grassland and this one is in a pond. Right? So these are zooplankton, then the fish, then you know, a bigger fish, it eats small fish and then you have this grain here too. So these are two examples of pyramid of numbers in a grassland and in a pond. And these are upright pyramids. Upright means the it's upright triangle. And inverted food chain or uh, inverted pyramid can also be there you can see so this is the inverted pyramid being shown here you can see. pyramid of numbers in grassland and here is another example too so here you can see how is it in this is the pyramid of numbers in grassland which is upright and this inverted is where the producers are less and the hyperparasites and hyperparasites are more so this is an actual example it can be so that there are less number of producers so there will be herbivores which will depend on the producer and then the herbivores would not survive much they would die and there would be parasites would be feeding on them and hyperparasites which would be feeding on the parasites so this is an inverted pyramid of numbers so this can also be functional so this is energy pyramid of numbers next is pyramid of biomass so in pyramid of biomass you have a different way of signifying the each trophic level basically in numbers you have the actual number like number of trees but pyramid of biomass takes a better way and looks at the weight so each at each trophic level the entire community of individuals is weight instead of just mentioning their number so like for example here you have 1000 kg of producers 100 kg of herbivores 10 kg of primary carnivores and then 1 kg of top carnivores so this is an upright pyramid of biomass in a terrestrial ecosystem Pyramid of biomass be inverted ka example bhi diya hai, inverted pyramid of biomass in aquatic ecosystem. But the producers jo hai, uska weight kam hai, herbivores ka weight zyada hai, then there will be carnivores which are much larger. So, uska weight aur zyada hota hai. So, yeah. so, this is gram per meter square. 
वेट गिवन इन ग्राम पर मीटर स्क्वायर मीन्स इतने एरिया में कितना ग्राम प्रोड्यूसर है कितने ग्राम हॉबीवर्स है मीटर स्क्वायर इज द यूनिट फॉर एरिया सो दिस इज एन इन्वर्टेड पिरामिड ऑफ एक्वेटिक इकोसिस्टम ये है थर्ड इज पिरामिड ऑफ एनर्जी और प्रोडक्टिविटी सो पिरामिड ऑफ एनर्जी और प्रोडक्टिविटी मतलब क्या इट रिफ्लेक्ट दी लॉज ऑफ थर्मोडाइनोमिक्स दैट इज कन्वर्जन ऑफ एनर्जी फ्रॉम वन फॉर्म टू एनर्जी हमने ये किया है लॉज ऑफ थर्मोडाइनोमिक्स तो सोलर एनर्जी इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू फर्स्ट द ओरिजिनल फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी इन द यूनिवर्स इन आर सोलर सिस्टम इन ऑन आर अर्थ इज द सोलर एनर्जी सो सोलर एनर्जी इज कन्वर्टेड टू केमिकल एनर्जी केमिकल एनर्जी का फर्दर फिर चेंज होता है जब कंज्यूम किया जाता है तो इट्स केमिकल एनर्जी व्हिच इज कंज्यूम सो देन देयर इज हीट एनर्जी व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट सो एट ईच ट्रॉपिक लेवल देयर इज लॉस ऑफ सम एनर्जी आल्सो सो दिस इज द पिरामिड ऑफ एनर्जी और एनर्जी पिरामिड सो एनर्जी पिरामिड का एक खासियत है वी हैव सीन दैट द टेरेस्ट्रियल इकोसिस्टम एंड द एक्वेटिक इकोसिस्टम फॉर बोथ यू नो पिरामिड ऑफ बायोमास और पिरामिड ऑफ नंबर्स कैन बी अपराइट और इनवर्टेड but pyramid of energy is always upright it cannot be inverted because it's the pyramid of energy so there has to be a large energy base because energy cannot be just created out of air so you cannot have an inverted energy pyramid so that's very important so at each tropic level the energy you know present is shown here now the next topic is bio accumulation and bio magnification so what do you mean by this so bio accumulation basically is about how pollutants enter a food chain means increase in the concentration of pollutant in an organism itself in one organism itself means you are accumulating something means you are eating some pollutant something bad and it is accumulating in your body so that is called bio accumulation and bio magnification is tendency of the pollutant to concentrate as they move from one trophic level to another means one trophic level to another is as shown in this figure you can see this is a small fish a big fish eats small fish so this is a small fish this big fish is eating it and a bigger fish is eating this fish so bio magnification means the pollutant gets magnified over the food chain over the trophic levels because if say this fish has 1 gram of pollutant in it now this will accumulate means it has 1 gram of pollutant and then when it will eat more and more over a period of time this 1 gram will become more at 2 3 4 and so on so that pollutant will keep accumulating in its body Say it has 10 gram over a period of time, 10 gram, and this big fish is eating up this fish. So this 10 gram will go in this big fish body too. But then this fish is not going to eat just one small fish. It will eat more for small fishes. So 10 gram say it eats 10 fishes. So 10 gram into 10 means there will be 100 gram of pollutant in this big fish. And if this fish is eating this fish, 100 gram plus say it eats three more. So 300 gram of pollutant in this fish. So as we go above in the trophic level, the concentration of pollutant increases. So that is called bio magnification. Increase in concentration of a pollutant in a food chain. And bio magnif uh, bio accumulation is increase in concentration of pollutant in one organism in an organism over a period of time. So see, this is another diagram which will make it clearer. See, this is bio accumulation which is happening over a period of time that the pollutant is increasing in the body of the organism. and this is bio magnification which is happening over the food chain so this uh, these organisms have 1 per, 1% uh, contaminated uh, polluted and here uh, these have like 30% they have uh, or 50% they have 70% and as we go above this keeps on increasing the concentration of pollutant goes on increasing so this is bio magnification so this was bio accumulation and this is bio magnification we we'll see more images to make this concept clearer so here you can see you have bio accumulation versus bio magnification of toxin like pesticide so bio accumulation the definition is increase in concentration of a chemical in an organism over time here the term is over time and bio magnification also called bio amplification is increase in concentration of a toxic chemical such as pesticide as it is passed upwards so it gets maximized to the top predator of the food chain that is bio magnification so here you can see how like a contaminant is magnified from here as we go above its concentration increases the amount remains the same in water the same amount of uh, like ddt here it is ddt you know which is the chemical pollutant a pesticide which is present in water but then same amount goes up but producers are like it's a pyramid na so the quantity here is less so its concentration increases 
zooplankton again concentration is increasing the quantity remains the same but because zooplankton is now becoming smaller same uh, pesticide is going up so its quantity remains the same but its concentration is increasing till here it becomes very high so that is biomagnification then here you have uh, distinguished between bioaccumulation versus biomagnification so here you can see gradual accumulation of substance such as pesticide or other chemical in living organism gradual means over a period of time and this is over trophic levels in a food chain so these are points on the same line that how accumulation is in an organism and how magnification is over the food chain and as we go from lower trophic level to higher trophic level next topic is nutrient cycling means the how nutrients move from physical environment to living organisms and subsequently are recycled back to the environment so how nutrients like carbon nitrogen etc are processed means how they move in a cycle from here you can see so these are the producers like nutrient cycle so these are the producers algae lichens and green plants they are eaten by consumers they die and they are decomposed by fungi and bacteria then these decomposers also under what decomposition they form humus and minerals in the soil and then from the soil water and minerals are provided to producers who produce again and they are eaten by consumers so this is a whole cycle even producers die consumers die and they decompose and so this is in general a nutrient cycle and now we'll see for each element like for nitrogen carbon etc so this is again a nutrient cycle in a picture format so here you can see that plant and animal matter they will enter into the soil get decomposed and then the minerals again decompose means the organic matter is converted into minerals and other nutrients and they are again absorbed by the plants so this cycle continues and the plants grow and they are eaten up by animals and there are also abiotic factors like water air which are also coming into picture so this is there then we have the nitrogen cycle so in the nitrogen cycle the nitrogen we understand n2 is present in environment but then nitrogen is fixed at environment atmospheric nitrogen is fixed by these nitrogen fixing bacteria you can see here so they fix it and form nitrate that is nh3 so this is nitrate formed and then nitrifying bacteria again converted into no3 this is nitrification going on then denitrification bacteria again undergo undertake and they denitrify it and form nitrogen so this is again a whole cycle going on you know, nitrification denitrification atmospheric nitrogen being fixed and it continues so there are nitrifying bacteria and denitrifying bacteria you should understand the difference between the two two we see nh4 is ammonia yeah? so this is there this is nitrogen oxide being formed nitrogen oxide is taken in by nitrifying bacteria and this no3 is formed which is assimilated and absorbed by plants also so this is another diagram of nitrogen cycle you can see nitrogen atmosphere it is taken in by nitrogen fixing bacteria which are there present in root nodules of leguminous plants so here nitrogen fixing bacteria undertake nitrogen fixation and then they are also present in soil so nitrogen fixation results in ammonium being formed and this ammonia is then uh, undertaken by nitrifying bacteria and they convert it into nitrates denitrifying bacteria again convert it into nitrogen and nitrates and ammonium are assimilated into plants they absorbed by plants and they result in formation of amino acids and proteins in plants and when they are consumed in animals they provide proteins and amino acids in animals and then these animals on decomposition on dying plants and animals they are uh, they are decomposed by detritus and these detritivores you can see they form detritus means dead matter and then they are decomposed by detritivores and formed again into ammonia so this is the nitrogen cycle shown here nitrification as you can see here ammonium been converted into nitrite and nitrate is called nitrification so nitrates are no3 nitrite means no2 and nitrate and nitrite being converted into nitrogen gas is called denitrification so that is that so there are nitrifying bacteria as well as denitrifying bacteria and then there are also these nitrogen fixation bacteria all three are different then we have the carbon cycle so the carbon cycle is shown here you can see so in the carbon cycle you have carbon 
in the form of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere so carbon dioxide is used by plants for photosynthesis in presence of sunlight and then they form carbohydrates and carbon fixation happens means carbohydrates are formed through photosynthesis and then it is consumed by animals and there is also a gas carbon dioxide in gaseous form which is exhaled by plants as well as animals so inhale we inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide so in terms of uh, photosynthesis plants use carbon dioxide but plants also undergo respiration animals respire and they give out carbon dioxide so this is the process so that's why they said don't sleep under a tree at night because it will give out carbon dioxide during the day it will take in carbon dioxide for photosynthesis in presence of sunlight but at night it will be giving out only carbon dioxide so that is there so this is there this is the entire cycle carbon cycle then carbon dioxide is also released as uh, pollutant by industries so when uh, fossils and fossil fuels are uh, heated or are burned when they undergo combustion it results in carbon dioxide which is released in atmosphere so this is the carbon cycle and plants animals when they die they decompose and they are the ones which form fossil fuels the fossil fuels over a long period of time are formed from from organic matter only so this is that and then they because they have carbon and then this is because they are also hydrocarbons you know, carbon compounds so they and they can undergo combustion and form carbon dioxide so this is the carbon cycle show. again this is an image showing carbon present in land lithosphere carbon store the carbon present in land and atmospheric carbon store carbon dioxide present in atmosphere and then ocean carbon store there is carbon in ocean store so this is there and in biosphere carbon store means all organic matter also has carbon so this is biosphere carbon store so all three oceanograph oceans atmosphere and lithosphere means ocean means hydrosphere all three spheres as well as biosphere four spheres have carbon in it so this is so these are the fuels like methane so they undergo combustion and they result in emission of carbon dioxide so that goes into atmosphere and and this atmospheric carbon undergoing photosynthesis forms bios biomass in biosphere deforestation uh, again or respiration decomposition all result in it must be carbon dioxide to increase then next is the third topic so we saw in environment so in the functions of ecosystem we saw the three functions are one is energy flow second is nutrient cycling and third is ecological succession so this is the last topic of ecological succession what does it mean so succession means a series of communities replace one another so successors like one generation goes another generation comes so it may be due to large scale destruction either natural or man made so there is a progressive series of changes which take place so here you can see ecological succession is actually gradual change in living communities that follows a disturbance like you can see this is uh, you know this is agriculture present here and a succession happens means it results in horticulture you know big plants trees being formed and then there is a catastrophe like a forest fire or something and then they go back to primary succession again new plants grow so this is ecological succession so the ecological succession can be understood as primary and secondary succession means first colonized uh, a land a terrestrial site is first colonized by a few hardy pioneer species so they can be even microbes lichens and mosses like on earth also life began through these microorganisms so they are the pioneer species then over a few generation they alter the habitat and then they develop the soil in the region so they work on the soil they develop the soil in the region and then secondary succession comes they, that starts on a well developed soil a, a site which is already found uh, already been uh, inhabited by living organisms and then sec secondary succession is relatively faster as compared to primary succession so primary succession takes a lot of time to grow build up and then secondary succession comes up and examples are given here like abandoned farmland is there so it is invaded by hardy species of grasses so grasses they can survive in bare sun baked soil so they develop into tall grasses herbaceous plants then there'll be uh, animals coming and living there like mice rabbits insects seed eating birds and then eventually trees build up and forest community develops so this is an example of succession so this is primary and secondary succession shown here you can see 
on a terrestrial site pioneer communities are there like lichens and mosses so on exposed rocks they work and they decompose it and uh, they you know, disintegrate it decomposition can be done on organic matter on rocks cannot be decomposed rocks are disintegrated they are broken down and then there are grasses herbs shrubs growing and then over a period of time pioneer community gradually develops into climax community it may undergo a catastrophe and may end so and on primary succession will again come forth so you can see so secondary succession begins here over a period of time how does it begin if like annual weeds are there then weeds grasses shrubs develop into trees and large trees so so this is on a primary succession is taking place on a barren land and this is secondary succession is taking place on soil soil is already there so this is a new generation growing old generation left means this entire timeline is over this is entire image shows primary succession is these tall trees are also part of this primary succession only they grew 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 until a catastrophe strikes until a disaster strikes and then this primary succession has ended this period has ended and then again new plants a new life has to begin again life has to begin afresh so that is called secondary succession so this is one way of looking at ecological successions primary and secondary this is again given in detail how bare rock where no soil is present pioneer species you know inhabited and then when they die decay then the resulting further trees being grown and climax community coming forth so primary succession can be defined as establishment of new community where none existed before and secondary succession here is you can see shown like you know primary succession ended with say for example a forest fire so then pioneer species again will come like grasses and weeds will begin to grow and then they will die they will develop into small shrubs trees and finally a large forest can develop again a climax com climax community will come so the secondary succession means re establishment of community following disturbance so that is the basic difference this is barren area and this is in disturbed area so this primary succession is initiated due to biological or any other external factor and secondary succession is always due to some external factor like a disaster any disaster external disaster here there is no soil here there is soil already present and the pioneer species come from outside environment and these pioneer species are from existing environment only and this takes a lot of time to get completed primary succession and this takes comparatively less time because soil is red like this is something like inhabiting the earth for the first time or in inhabiting an unknown place for the first time and then when that generation dies a new generation comes in which has everything ready for them the soil everything is ready right so here is the results of primary succession so there are pioneer species as we spoke of lichens uh, or some such plants small grasses they are perennials and then you have intermediate species and then the climax community so these are the three terminologies in ecological succession which you should know here again you are shown primary succession Okay. So this is not just primary succession, not just for uh, land uh, plants, but also for animals. So they may also have primary succession, and then they are again bare bottom. You have the blue green algae organisms, then small insects, worms, fish, and then larger organisms. So this is also primary succession of a pond, which is shown. So it's for plants as well as animals, all organisms. then next way in which we can we can divide as different types of ecological succession is autogenic succession and allogenic succession so what is the difference between the two so autogenic means succession brought about by living inhabitants of that community itself and if allogenic means from outside forces so autogenic succession here you can see is by biotic factors living organisms and this is by abiotic factors external factors so secondary succession which we saw starts with uh, living organisms so it is autogenic succession and primary succession starts with allogenic succession and then proceeds to autogenic succession so that is one way autogenic and allogenic then another way of uh, dividing or uh, you know having different types of uh, ecological succession is whether it is autotrophic or heterotrophic so autotrophic succession means initially there are green plants in much greater quantity 
and then we have heterotrophs. But then uh, heterotrophic succession means heterotrophs are in greater quantity. So that is called heterotrophic succession. Hmm. Heterotrophic organisms can be bacteria, fungi, etc. Too. So they are in huge amount. So that is called heterotrophic succession. Hmm. Well, you can see. So heterotrophic succession is characterized by early dominance of heterotrophs such as animals, fungi, bacteria, you know, actinomycetes in the environment. Right. Then there can be progressive succession and retrogressive succession. So succession which occurs in direction of simple community to complex community is progressive. Means from simple community is developing into complex community. And retrogressive is from complex it is becoming simple, gradually becoming simple. Like for example, some, uh, some disease strikes and the complex community is now reducing the larger organisms are dying or something and it is becoming a simple community. So that is a retrogressive succession. These are all types of succession listed down over here for your perusal. Okay. Plant succession again there are different terminologies like hydrozer, mesozer, zerozer depending on where it starts. Succession starts in region where water is plenty is called hydrozer. Mesozer where moisture is plenty. No moisture is there in adequate amount. Zerozer is where moisture is present in minimal amount along with water. Lithoser, Helloser, Samoser, etc. So that is it. Here we end with our topic. There is one last image which we have to see. This is about the gist of the entire topic ecosystem which we studied, and which is interaction of biotic and abiotic components. So both are shown here. Biotic community is dynamic, which we already saw. Succession, you know, pioneer, pioneer species too climax species. Then we talk about uh, here, you can see, nutrient cycling being shown here, how energy flow is unidirectional being shown here, the different trophic levels being shown here, the entire, entire here you can see, terminologies like nutrient cycling, various cycles like carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, hmm, phosphorus cycle, there are many such cycles. And terminology is being explained like decomposition, can take place through fragmentation, you know, like breaking down of dead matter into small particles, leaching, where water soluble nutrients seep down into soil and form soils, or catabolism, where bacteria and fungal enzymes degrade the detritus. So, in different ways, decomposition can take place. And finally, you have the ecological pyramid too, where you have, you can see, this is pyramid of energy. So, de decrease in biomass and energy takes place, drive it takes place from lower tro trophic level to higher trophic level. So that is it. Here we end our chapter. Wish you all all the very best. Thank you.